It was a valley that would test your 
loved ones and we battle financial hardship. We battle giants that we have to face. We battle spirits of depression and suicide. We, we battle this thing of tolerance and we battle the, the thing of needing to be accepted by everybody. We have heartache and we have pain and we battle depression and we have fear and we have emotional turmoil and we have mind games that go on. We're traveling in a valley of disease and sickness and all of these problems and people have died in this valley. People that have tried to make it to Jerusalem have died in this valley of Baca and many people have started their journey through Baca only to have not made it through to the other side. But I have come to tell us here today that we need to have a spirit and an attitude that says I am going to make it through the valley of Baca because things aren't always going to go right for us and things aren't always going to be a bed of roses and warm apple pie and ice cream. It's not always going to be the good times but I want you to know that if you have your mind made up that I'm going to make it through the valley of Baca I'm going to make it through my times of weeping. I'm going to make it through those times when it feels like I can't go on. I'm going to make it through the sickness. I'm going to make it through the turmoil. I'm going to make it through the problem because this valley of something jumped out at me. The rain 
first month wasn't October to December in that calendar. But he's trying to tell us that in that valley of weeping, amen, there's some seasons that God is going to pour out the former rain, that God will send the comforter, that God will send you the Holy Ghost. And even though you're in the valley and there's no wells around you and there's no water around you, that you got the Holy Ghost and God will pour out rain where there should not be any rain. And there will be pools of water for you to be refreshed. Oh, well, he said, I'm going to send you the former rain. When you feel like you can't go on, I'm going to send you the comforter. When you feel like giving up, I'm going to send you the former rain. I'm going to fill you with the fresh dose of the Holy Ghost. And you can make it through the valley of Baca. He sends us the Holy Ghost, the former rain. Amen. And he said that out of your belly then will flow rivers of living water. That means you might go through the valley of weeping and you might go through the trial of your life. Things may not be going your way, but I want you to know that he'll send you the Holy Ghost and that while you're there, you can have a good old-fashioned prayer meeting and the power of God will flow out of you and you will be sustained and you will make it through the times of weeping. You'll make it through the times of struggle. You'll make it through the times that you want to give up. Why? Because he's going to send us the former rain. Hey, man, I'm going to send the former rain for you. And then he goes on to say, in Joel chapter number 2, at 24 through 27, that once this rain begins to fall, that the floors will be full of wheat, and the fats will overflow with wine and oil. Hey, man, you've heard me preach this all of last year about restoration. I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. While you're in the valley of Baca and while you're in the valley of weeping, God will send the comforter to you and you'll have an outpouring of wine and oil. You'll have an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. The fats are going to burst forth. You're going to have a lot of food to eat. God will be your rest and God will be your strength. He said you will know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord. And there is none else. God will show up in the midst of your weeping just so you know that he is your God. And there is nobody like him. He is the one true and living God. And he'll show up and he'll make a difference right when you thought there couldn't be a difference made. Right when you thought that the valley of the dryness and the weeping. Right when you thought that trial was going to overcome you and overtake you. He said you're going to be full of weeping. And full of oil. And full of wine. And that valley might have been destroyed by locusts. Now it's going to be restored. Vegetation is going to grow. And that journey that you're making from here to heavenly Jerusalem is going to be just a little bit easier. It's going to be just a little bit easier. Because I sent the former rain down to you. I'm thankful that God sent the former rain. I'm thankful that in Acts chapter number 2 that he fulfilled the promise that he would not leave us comfortless, but I would come down to you, and I would come and send the comforter in my name. I'm thankful that while they were in that upper room, hey man, they might have been going through a dry time, but he's trying to tell them, I'm going to send the rain to you. I'm going to send the rain. They were weeping. Jesus is gone, but he said, I'm going to send the rain to you. I'm going to let you know that I haven't left you. Hey man, to that time of that valley, you feel alone and you feel neglected, but I want you to understand that if you can just lift the hand of God, if you can open up your mouth and give God a little bit of praise, if you can just know that God is with you and he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you, then you can say, God, I need a well right here. God, I need, a, I need some time of refreshing right now. The Bible says in Acts that he would send us the times of refreshing while you're in that valley of weeping and while you're in that valley of tears. If you need refreshing, God will send you the refreshing that you so we don't have to give up in the valley of weeping. We don't have to give up in the valley of tears. Because if you just hold on, there's a well waiting for you. If you just hold on, there's a river that is waiting for you. And some people think in this journey, I don't know if I can make it through I don't know if I can make it through that. The Bible says in Proverbs 24, in verse number 10, it says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, the day of adversity, thy strength is small. You're right. You feel like you can't make it. You're right. You can't make it through Baca if you do it alone. Because you fake the day of adversity, your strength is small. 
None of us are designed on this journey from here to heaven to make it there on our own. We were never designed, He never created us to get from here to heaven to do it on our own. Because in this valley, there's vipers. In this valley, there's thorns. In the valley, there's pitfalls. There's wild animals that are going to come and try to knock you upside your head. You can't do it alone. But you can make it through Baca if you have God with you. You can make it through Baca. That's why David said in Psalms 23 that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why did he not have to fear anything? He says in the next verse, because thou art with me. Thy rod he said, look, I'm going to go through some hard times, and I'm going to go through the valley of weeping, and the valley of tears, and the valley of death. But thank God I'm not going through it alone, but I can make it through the other side, because thou art with me. Amen. I want you to understand that you can make it through my God, because he is with you. And I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I can make it through my child, because I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I'm here to tell you.